Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Coming to you on Wednesday, February the 10th. The year is 2021. Let's talk trading. Wait for your pitch with Walmart. And one thing you should have to wait for is to know that these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and from Walmart's. It was funny. The other day I was talking with Walmart. I said, told him, I said, I know why you're so good at waiting because you played baseball and you learned to wait for your pitch. Isn't that right, Walmart? Yep, you're absolutely right. I mean, that was a very, very, very big developmental thing for me as a, as a kid and growing up, you know, and uh, it's funny because where I really learned to go and do that was there was a major league player by the name of Duke Carmel, and he played in the major leagues uh, for about six years. He wasn't a great player, he certainly wasn't a Hall of Fame famer. He was only in there for six years, and I think he got out with his batting average was somewhere around 220, something like that, and only four home runs, but the one thing he did teach me in high school was is that because he became a uh, a uh, high school uh, coach, and uh, one of the things he taught me was when you get up to the plate, you wait for the pitch. You don't just take the pitch. No, you wait for the pitch. And in baseball, there's a couple reasons for that. One, because what happens is you wear the pitcher down. That's got really no, you know. Uh, n no bearing on trading, but you know, but that's part of with baseball why you do it. The second reason is because when you get up there, you now when you get into the batter spot, uh, into uh, you know the on deck circle, you're sitting there watching and watching and watching, watching the pitches, getting used to the pitches. You know, that's sort of like what I talked about yesterday with the idea of you know, go out there, get out there 20, 30 minutes ahead of time, watch how the market's moving, get into the rhythm of the market. And that's what that is. Then when you get into the batter's box, now it's a different perspective. Go in there, watch what's going actually happening, wait for that pitch to come along, wait for that trade. You know, there's so many times where, you know, I, I find myself doing this. I was like, okay, I've got this particular, I got this method, and this is how, these are my rules. I know it's going to come. I know it's going to come. Okay, you know what? I'm so excited about it coming. The next thing I know, I go and pull the trigger, and guess what? It didn't come. And the next thing you know, I'm underwater. And that's, you know, I didn't wait for my trade. I didn't wait for my pitch. You know, there are times, you know, and we've talked about this before, Tiara, where, okay, but if you go and do that, there are going to be times where you're going to miss quote-unquote opportunities. So I'm going to ask you a question, Tiara. Is that really missing my pitch or missing the opportunity? No, no, what we talked about was, you know, for example, we have a certain trade that we like to do, um, and it's the DSR trade. And one of the things that we look for is we look for a three ball at the bottom, a one ball here at a top, and then another one ball. And then when we get a confirmation, we'll take the long. And so in this case, you know, when price breaks the high right here, we'll, we want to go long. And then in this case, we got another one ball near the three. Well, this candle here was a bull candle. So when the second candle uh, breaks that high, we go long. But if you don't have a bull candle on a three ball or a two ball, like for example, over here on the chart, we have to wait. We, we wait this candle out. We call that the wait candle. The candle after the ball is the wait candle. And so here we wait that out and then we get our signal and we get to go long. And so there might be some trades. Oh, I could have made this. I could have made that. But it wasn't your trade. And we wait for our pitch. Like right now, price is in the 40, what I like to call the launch pad. So I'm going to wait for a signal and I'm going to go long. Exactly right. You need to go and wait. You know? and, and the reason why you do that is because more times than not, um, what tends to happen is that whatever the previous run was or the previous direction hasn't completely turned around for you yet. And if you would have just said, oh, I'm in the launch zone, go long. Well, right now, you know, you, maybe you got in, I don't know, at 49 or 46, and now you'd be underwater by a bunch, you know, and that that's not the goal. No, we need to go and wait for the setup to occur. Now, if I get that set up and we know that it likes to launch out of the 40s, doesn't happen every time, but it does happen often enough, and I get my pattern or my, my method gets completed in terms of what I need to wait for, man, get in it and take it because then then I can usually go and get a, a really nice profit. And that's what we have to look for. Wait for the pitch to come in. You know, in, in baseball, you call that a fat pitch. You want, you're waiting for that fat pitch to come in. You're waiting for that ball to be sitting right there, right across chest level so that you can go and take
take that pitch and just slam it to where you need to go and slam it to. Well, that's what we do in trading. We sit there and we wait for that pitch to come in. We wait for that perfect pitch and get that best trade we can. Now, you know, of course, you know, you, you, it's not going to work every time. But it'll happen often enough where you wind up not taking some of those losses that you that you can take by not waiting for the pattern to fully develop. Now, like right there, that was one that was impossible to get in because when that candle opened, um, it just popped up. I mean, there was like right. no no way to get in. Um, but see, yeah. now you get a second try right here. Um, or as soon as this candle went from bear to bullish with that three ball, that could have been an opportunity. So maybe I could have been in somewhere around 42 and out at 45 or 46. Right. And the way I usually play that is that I'll put a pending chart, a pending order out there and hope it gets hit. You know, if I see that, okay, I'm going to have a bullish can, I'm going to have a bullish candle there. I'll put it pending there and hopefully I'm far enough away and my broker is willing to go and accept the order. And sometimes they don't, you know, because it's too close because, you know, they, all the brokers have all these crazy rules about how far a pending order can be from the actual price when it actually gets placed. But, you know, hopefully it gets, it gets picked up. And if it, if it did, you know, you could have picked up a pip on that, I guess. I, I haven't looked. At, let me see where it would have gotten it there. Could have actually picked up two, two, two point two pips. You know, the only thing is that you also could have been burned on it too because it ran up there so quickly and then it fell off the cliff. So could you've gotten out? You know, but that's that's trading. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> trading. That's for sure. But you know, and the thing is, the most important thing is, you know, right now. You know, we have another opportunity, and we if we waited for the pitch, you know, here's the thing. You'd be getting in right now. Now, we had plenty of time to get into this one, and right now we'd be up a pip, you know, and you could have gone in, got a pip, and and jumped out, you know, or you could stay in because it didn't it didn't go take you it didn't take you underwater. So maybe you stayed in and you just, you know, you're hoping that the trade fully develops. You know, I probably wouldn't be looking for more than two pips on this just because we're going into an area looking left, which we've talked about so often that there's been some trouble there, you know. Um, or, or what you do is, you, what I like to do is take a little bit of profit off the table, you know, and, uh, and then move your stop to break even and, you know, see what the second half does. Yeah, because you can see there was a one ball right here. And there's a two ball here, and you can see price came down and touched that level and bounced up. So we're we're like between this old one ball and old two ball, um, we're kind of sticking. And now price has, has come back down. And so this is kind of an example here why you take those one or two pips now, and why you wait of, for your pitch. <laughs> right, exactly. Now, if there was lots of white space between those two, let's say those two – those. Uh, those two uh, uh, balls are probably about, I'd say, maybe three pips apart, something like that, you know. And but if let's say those two balls were, you know, ten or fifteen pips apart, well, that gives you a little bit more room to play with, and you know, and that's part of that idea of a of a fat of a fat pitch too, because you know, you know, you may not want to go and sit there and say, you know what, I don't want to go and do this one pip thing. Maybe I want to wait for a better opportunity where the distance between them is a little bit further and there's a better chance that they could go and run from one ball to the other ball, you know, and and that's a valid way of trading, you know. At the same time. You know, it, I wouldn't mind taking those other pitches if I know I can get in and get out quick enough. As long as the market doesn't go and <laughs> put a sad face on me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, and if the traders are wondering, what what is this indicator um, that I have up here that's saying bull and bear? It's the order block indicator. Uh, I just changed the labels because it was confusing people. Because you see, I... Uh, a bullish candle puts in a bearish order block and a um, bearish candle puts in a bullish order block so you can see here price left that order block and you can see here price when it left when price leaves that area that's what creates the order block so here price came back in and came back out price right here came back in but didn't come back out so once again sometimes these things work sometimes they don't and this is on m1 I mean, I think where the uh, order blocks are really effective or are higher time frames, that way, you know, price is pretty much settled. So, for example, here, H1, if you were to do that, 
but I just happen to have these on this on this one screen. And this is one of our trading screens. So you can see here the uh, H1 range high to low this hour has already been 22 pips. And that's about right. And see, we're now bit down to the 30s. So we're going to look for another trade set up to go to the north. But the daily range is only 64 pips. That's at the 19th percentile. So today is just going to be one of those <laughs> underperforming range days. And that doesn't mean that you can't make money on that because, you know, yeah, I know you like to go and talk about travel. You know, yeah, it, it ranged only 63 pips, 63 pips. But if you're looking at that one uh, one hour, you know, chart, look at how many pips it went up and how many pips it went down and how many pips it went up and how many pips it went down and how many pips it went up, you know, back and forth like that. So I don't know how many pips that is if you added it all up, but I'll, I'll bet you it's, it's over three or 400 pips. So there was lots of places where you could have made, made money, you know? So, you know, if, just because you have an, you know, a daily range of that's only 63, that, you know, that's not really telling the full story about what's going on. You get a better idea when you look at, you know, the hourly and you see that, you know, yeah, we had a couple hours there where it was really, really compressed, where it was 11 pips, 14 pips, 11 and 11. But the last three hours, we've had 22, 23 and 20. So there was room to go and make some money. You know, you could have made money on the Walmart trades. You could have made money, you know, doing these DSR type trades. You could have made money on the hourly breakout trades. So there was money to be made. It's just that, you know, you just have to go and adapt to what the market's doing. You know, look for your pitch and take your pitch. <laughs> exactly. And to tell you the truth, while you were just talking, I was just playing. I got in at 42.9, out at 44.7, and back in at 44, and out at 45.2. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't numbers that some people that wow people. Oh, look, you made 20 pips. You know, you're probably between all that, you made two pips. But here's the reality with it all, though. You know, what's your account size on it? If your account size is big enough, you know, and you put enough money behind it, you can you can rack up some serious, you know, dollars. Exactly. You know, and, that, and that's the reality of it. Exactly. And and that's one yeah. of the things that, um, you know, part of keeping your eye on the ball it, or, or actually waiting for your pitch um, is that you focus on what you can do and when you can do it and you can you can do certain things and there's certain things you can't do so for example maybe for whatever reason you can't do quick trades maybe you have a slow computer maybe your reaction time is just a hair too slow so you have to wait for for um, a pitch or a setup in this case where you can get in comfortably and it's going to give you enough time to get out. Um, you know, because the way um, I like to trade it, it's, it's pretty much video game. Um, but other people, you know, they, they don't like that. They, they can't do that. They don't want to do that. And that's exactly right, TRO, because, you know, we all have different personalities. We all, you know, do things differently just based on who we are as people. And so know who you are. You know, some people are home run hitters and some people are singles hitters. So know who you are and then play that game. You know, it's the type of thing where the – the, the uh, baseball player from the from the uh, from the sixties that was talking about Duke Carmel, he was not a home run hitter. He was a singles hitter. You know, did very well singles, hitting singles. But you know, I think his entire career he only had four home runs. If he went up to the plate every single time trying to trying to mash a home run out there, you know, he he would he wouldn't have lasted the six years in the major leagues. He would have been gone in the first year. You know, right. and we as we as traders, if we you know if we were out there, you know, looking to go and pick up. We know that we're really good at picking up one to two pips. Pick up the one or two pips and just keep on doing it over and over and over again, you know? You know, it's sort of like, you know, rinse, wash, repeat. Exactly. You know, and, that, and that's what we got to do. Yeah. Or actually, you should say wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> yeah. And so, fellow traders, the fastest 15 minutes in trading is up. So just kind of remember to uh, wait for your pitch because it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So I want you to go out there. And drain the banks. This is the rumpled one. Over and out.